Hi, this is Seeking Sustainability Live. I'm JJ Walsh. I run a small business in Japan called Inbound Ambassador, focused on sustainability. And today in the talk show, we are talking with Lee Utsumi. She's an artisan baker based in Oiso, Kanagawa, about an hour outside of Tokyo. And she is co founder of Lee's Bread. Today, we're talking about her new shop that they just opened and running a business through the coronavirus time. Thank Hi, thanks for joining today. I hope you enjoy this episode. If you want to learn more about the work that I do, check out inboundambassador.com and you can also find me on buymeacoffee.com slash JJ Walsh to get some bonus information and insights from the series. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. This is Seeking Sustainability Live only on Instagram Live this morning. Thanks so much, Lee, for joining in this kind of unusual way today. How are you doing、yeah. this morning? I'm、um, good. It's my day off. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining on your day off. That's so great.、Uh, you're welcome.、Um, so, as a baker, what is your usual schedule? What time do you usually get up? Um, uh, okay, well, my husband and I you know, get, up, get up at different times, but usually I get up at. Um, 3 45 or 4 45. Wow, that's just incredible. And then, do you have like a midday nap so that you can get through the day, or how do you do your schedule? Um, no, usually no midday nap、uh, right now, but um, well, hopefully that will happen soon. Um, yeah, we opened, we opened the bakery, let's see. On, I think about two weeks ago at our new location. And、um, yeah, we've been really busy. So, this new location,、uh, I remember talking to you on the series of about eight months ago, was it? And you were showing, showing me the new location. I believe it was right next to your original location. Is that right? Yeah, sort of. It's, just,、um, it's um, down there. What do you say? Yes,、yeah, around the corner from our old place. And, and tell me about it because it was a big remodel project. How long did it take?、Um, I don't know. We started probably about you know, two years, two years ago.、Um, and then you know, we, ran in, we had some problems and we had to stop the, the renovation. And then I know, due to Corona,、uh, due to corona you know, we found a way to, you know, to what's the word? To get some funding and to, and to you know, speed up the project. So we started in December、um, last year, and then we had to have the whole shop done and inspected by mid January. So, was it the government funding for、uh, small businesses getting through coronavirus that you were able to put to use? Um, yeah, there's you know, certain, yeah, certain restrictions like you have to figure out a way you know, to what do you say, submit a proposal to you know, get funding. But you know, we found a way you know, to get some aid to help us out you know, to finish it because you know, it's, it's, you know, we need new equipment for larger space. And then the health、uh, department has certain restrictions, and they're pretty strict right now. Yeah. Well, you're in your new bakery right now. Can you show us around? Okay, wait a minute. Okay, so can I take the camera off? I mean, I don't want to show my face right now. Yeah,、okay. yeah, of course. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I don't know where I should start, but. Yeah, start from the outside. I'd love yeah, to see the outside. Okay, let's start from the outside.、Um... Are you living in the top of the shop, or this is just、no. a standalone shop? No, I'm not living here yet. Um, mm-hmm. You know, maybe later. Okay, so let's see. 
Okay, so here we are. You know, and I wish I had pictures of before because it's just amazing the difference. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, and then I'll just, you know, you can see we still don't have like, you know, a sign above the shop yet. Um, my husband's going to do that. Um, and then, I don't know, we took some antique bri bricks and we laid them here. Nice. And we have an antique light from our old shop, you know, uh, above the weekly menu. I like that. Can I see the weekly menu? Do you hand do you hand write it? Um, no, it's not handwritten. My husband, you know, he does it on the on the computer. I like that idea. That's a nice yeah. touch. Yeah, it sure is. Um, and did you totally rebuild the whole building, or um, did you just remodel parts of it? Um, like the first, the first floor, we totally remodeled it. Um, you know, we took out the old ceiling, the old wood in the ceiling. And I was like debating on whether to keep it or not. And then I thought, no, you know, because dust falls from the ceiling. And I wanted, you know, I, I was in my old space. I was working in a, you know, a dark space with high ceilings and it was dark and hard to see. And I decided, no, I want it to be bright and just completely different. Yeah. yeah. I remember you, you showing pictures from your old bakery and how small and cramped and dark it was. I don't know how you did that for so many years. You must feel so much happier in this new bright space, right? Look, I, I'm just, it's like, it's like I feel like I'm in heaven right now. <laughs> That's wonderful. You know, yeah, but, you know, sometimes, you know, I mean, you have to go through that to appreciate, you know, good things later on. And, and you know, it just, you know, it made us, you know, work hard, you know, work hard and just, what's the word I want to say, not give up on our dreams to, you know, to make a better space. And I just, everything about this place, you know, I love it. And I, I actually had a lot, it was kind of nice that we had that long break um, before we started the our renovation again because I had time to like you know think about what how I wanted to lay out the kitchen and also like the, the, the shop the storefront you know how we wanted to do that and you know this time we didn't have a designer you know help us with the building so everything we had to decide ourselves which was a lot of work yeah I like your olive olive tree in the front was it a gift no, oh yeah, sorry. It's it's a Myers lemon tree. Okay. It's a Myers lemon tree. No, it isn't it? It wasn't a gift. I bought it because I um I don't know. We were making um, Myers lemon cream um, from um, lemons grown in Oiso. You know, from that was made um, by a customer, and I just mm -hmm. like in love with the taste, and I and I decided I gotta buy a, a lemon tree and grow my own. So. Do you do you have a small garden that you source some of your ingredients from? Oh, do I have a small garden? A garden? Do you yeah. have a small garden, or do you just source from local farmers? Like I source well the local shop here that has you know wait, local vegetables, so I use that, and then just you know I try to buy as much local as I can, and then. It's not available. I, you know, I go, I go to a bigger store and buy it. So, you know, I just do the best I can. Yeah, I mean, everything organic. You know, still, you know, because of the all. Wow. But you know, what I can yeah. do, I do. What is that's organic. great. Yeah. Um. And then, all right. Um, yep. And then, and then I wanted to show you. We use the Oya Ishi, which is a volcanic rock from our old shop. We had this underneath the plant, so we we incorporated incorporated this into the walkway. And then I had this old bench I bought that I loved, you know. And you know, finally we could use this. And then I love that. I it's love so it. nice, especially now during coronavirus. People can just buy something and sit on your bench and eat it outside, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, got, and re reusing the bricks, it's so beautiful, but also more sustainable. It's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, just everything I have, I had in my uh, lots of these things I just I had in my shop, and I had in my all these 
like old um old chocolate i have old chocolate uh mold and then things like my grandmother and my grandparents made that i was holding on to but i wasn't using so i just like you know pulled everything out and then my staff they helped me you know come up with some ideas on how to um design the shop window so, you know, I love those those little felt dolls. Did someone make that for you? I oh, know they sure did. I mean, they were, one of my staff they made these dolls for me. That's so nice. Is that you and your husband? Yeah, and it looks just like my husband. <laughs> uh, That's know, so all, all, these, all these things, these are like things made by my um, grandmother, my great grandmother, my great grandmother, my grandmother, and then. Um, things my parents gave me. So, do you come from? I think we talked about it last time. Do you come from a like an artisan or a baker or maker family, craftspeople? Um, no, I not got, actually I I don't. But all the women in my family they love cooking and they were really good at making things with their hands. Nice. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, and then my family they're like no scientists or. Um, like mechanical, actually mechanical, but no. I, but everyone loved food and baking. Yeah. All um, right. Let's see what else I have to show you. I don't know. Just all these things in my shop that you know, my I had someone made this floral arrangement. Uh, for Gorgeous. Here. And I don't know. My mom. Uh, yeah, my mom. This is her her watercolor painting. That I love. Um, and then this is like an antique, um, it's like something you put over a, uh, I guess a flame, I mean a campfire or something, a stove, and then you can bake bread in this, but I never tried it out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, That's really cool. And then we have this antique showcase, which really, um, shows off the bread and makes it look yeah, it's easy to see, and, and then also my cust my staff, they made these um, signs. You know, we finally sat down and we made like really good descriptions of the bread, and we worked on the pricing. Yeah, and if if anybody looks at your Instagram, you've always got it full of so many beautiful varieties of breads. How do you make so many different varieties every day? Oh, no. Yeah, actually, and I actually I reduce the actually I, we we um, reduce the amount of kinds we're making actually a little bit right now. But, but I don't know. I don't know. It's just one day at a time. What can I tell you? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then these are the um, these like stenciled um, pieces of wood here for the sales counter. My husband, he we took apart the bread boxes we, he made for me um 20 i guess 20 how many 20 over 20 years ago he made me bread boxes for wow. for when i sold bread at the market we used to carry bread in these boxes and um yeah so we took them apart and we incorporated them into the the sales counter um, i love it it's yeah, such I, a it's such a nice simple logo stencil that your husband's made you i love your logo so much Oh, thank you so much. Um, I don't know. What else can I show you? And then this patchwork curtain. Yeah, this is all, um, this is like pillowcases from, you know, my great grandmother's house in, in the Bronx, actually, in New York. And then this is part of like a curtain, a uh, chair cover from my, my mother's mother, my other grandmother. Just all these things. They have so much memories. You know, for me. Yeah. Oh. Have, while um, you were running the other shop, did you have family come over from New York yeah, and see your place? No, 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 unfortunately not because I know I just, uh, no, but I'm hoping I can have my sister come. And my father actually, he saw the shop. I mean, I showed him on the video, you know, I could show him, you know, with my iPhone what we were doing. So he saw, he saw the shop. So I'm really, I'm really happy he saw that. So, and I, oh yeah, and I put together this mobile, and this is like my parent, my grandparents, and my, uh, my grandmother's um, brownstone in the Bronx, and then um, our old recipe for milk pie from my great-grandmother, 
and just like pictures that just you know mean a lot to me I put this up and then another curtain that um, my staff um, put together you know for this window and then I have more stuff like that in the bathroom you know pictures my husband took um, it's so wonderful and so yeah. unique and so personal did you have all of this uh, decorating your old shop or this is all kind of newly put up no it's all newly put up and um, we had no space for any decoration um, at the old shop and even if I, even if I put something up probably you wouldn't be able to see it because it's too dark inside <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah but yeah and then we have this you know nice sales space here um and the slicer I like, and the sink I like here. The, and then I have like the, the tile. The tile is really nice yeah. and clean looking. It's it's nice yeah. to put tile in. Um what as as far as doing your bakery, are there certain like materials that you wanted to put in the bakery which is better for making bread? I remember last time we were talking about problems with the humidity having different seasons was a bit tricky for you some of your bread recipes um so certain materials like wood or tile would that help with the temperature or anything um, did you think about that um yeah the um number one thing was having uh, um having a you know decent um heating and air conditioning and also um you know and also we put in insulation so that was the other thing, why I decided to get rid of the old ceiling and not leave it. And then, so we, we put a ceiling in, I mean, uh, we put a ceiling here, boards in, and then we put insulation in inside because, you know, to keep the temperature, you know, constant, yeah. uh, stable. And yeah. also, let me think about the tiles, you know, because it, it, they're bright and they're easy to clean. Everything worked out, and then this like shut this. Um, I don't know what you call it, this thing that looks like a shutter. That was from mm -hmm. that's from our house. Um, old piece of wood from our house. So we, you know, brought that here. So I just have all these things from home that just make it make the atmosphere feel really comfortable here. Um, nice. And then, and then the other thing is we bought this dishwasher. Oh my gosh, I never had a dishwasher in my whole life. And this is the best thing I ever bought. <laughs> you know, I bet it saves you time. I mean, it just takes one minute. I mean, one minute to wash the dishes. Uh, to wash, you know, we can wash trays and and all these um, bread molds that we were, we were scraping and washing by hand. Now we can just put them in there and then this saves time. Wow, you know? that's awesome. Yeah. So you were you were doing everything by hand. You were doing all the baking and all the washing up and all the display and sales. That's it saves you a lot of time having one part of that easier, right? Look, I sure it sure does. It sure does. And then yeah, and we got an ice maker and then I made this coffee space here. So, you know, I just found the most affordable way that I could do coffee and I found a um uh, a coffee roaster in, in my, in Chigasaki that could roast, you know, beans for us and make a blend. Just pop. Um, so you, do you have Lee's blend of coffee now? Yeah, uh, we do. And, um, yeah, but still it's not, sell it's not really selling well. Well, in part, it's not selling well, but you know, but I'm going to keep doing it. And, um, when we have a eating space, which I'm going to do. It's not going to be really big. You know, make a counter, a counter where the flowers are, and then maybe a table in the corner. Then I think it, it will do a lot better with the coffee. Yeah. Nice. So, so when you have your, your eat-in space, when coronavirus, maybe it's a bit uh, under more under control, how many seats would you have in your eat-in? I got three. Three? So quite a small. Three, three, and then I don't know, maybe six or seven or something. I think. I mean, six or seven. I don't want it to be too cramped. Yeah, and that's great. You seven. a local roaster? I want to know what kind of blend you're using for your coffee because uh, I I love coffee. Um, 
No, I don't know. No, he doesn't tell me what the. Be- I mean, he won't. T- he doesn't tell me what the beans are. Um, Is it like a dark roast or? Uh, oh yeah, I can't tell you this. So we have this coffee pot that's like you know a filter. You know, we put the beans in there. Um, they have to be coarse ground. So I bought a, a special grinder for that. And then um, this coffee maker we have, it's not good on um, like espresso and dark coffee because the temperature is too high. The water, it heats the water mm-hmm. too hot. So we have like a medium blend, you know, coffee, but mm-hmm. it's not, not too acidic. So it's kind of in the middle. So I, I love the, the drip coffee places, but of course doing drip coffee, it takes a lot of time for the staff and you guys are so busy doing other things, right? I'm sure that's a consideration. Yeah. It's got to be something so fast. We we, yeah, we can't do the hand drip coffee. So we just put it in the, in this machine and it does it. And then it's like a thermos underneath. So it keeps it warm. So it's just, you know, what you call it, like, you know, those, those hot pots, I don't know what you call it, you know, for the hot water, you know, the Japanese have, you know, for yeah. hot tea, so you have hot tea whenever you need it. It's one of those pots. And it's okay. Been, it's been working really well for us. Nice. Uh, and then also we wanted a coffee that, you know, he, the roaster, he picked a blend, he made a blend for us, you know, that we could drink black. It would be good with bread. With any of my breads, and then it, the coffee would taste good just drinking it black. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. Yeah. Um, and then back and, there is your ovens, a bit okay. further back. Yeah, and then here's our yeah, and then here's our oven. I'm sorry, I don't have it turned on. Um, yeah, our oven. Oh, okay. And, okay. Like it's a gas oven. I wanted a gas oven. Um, it's a gas oven, and it's like two trays will fit in each 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 deck so it's three decks um it's big enough for us i mean bigger than this is a lot it's a lot of work running the oven because you, you have bread going in and coming out you know so is this a different oven system than you had before no it's the same oven it's the same no, the same oven i had before believe it or not i don't know how I mean, it's like amazing that we fit all the equipment we did in our previous space, which was... Yeah, probably, you have so much more space now, right? Yeah, it was, our old space was probably one-fourth. One well, we also have more space behind this kitchen, but it was uh, <laughs> about like one-fourth of what we have now. Wow. With the sales space. I mean, it wasn't comfortable at all. It was like being working on a, in a submarine or something every day. Right, if I can, <laughs> every minute, excuse me, excuse me, you know, because only one person could, could get by, you know. Yeah, I can. Um, so now you have four ovens, you two no, ovens? No, guys, it's like three decks. I mean, the oven is three decks, um, which is, you know, enough, big enough production for our shop. Um, and usually we start, my husband, he wakes up at two and he bought a little scooter and he'll he drives to work and then he'll turn on the oven and then he usually you know depending on the on the dough and how it's rising he'll start baking at like three or four and then oh this machine here is the dough it's called like the dough conditioner or it's like a proofer and a retarder so we put all the bread in here overnight so and then it it turns on and it it proofs the dough and then we just, you know, we start put it in the oven and start baking. So, now, and, and by proof, you mean like let it rise? rise yeah, bread, rise. Yeah. It helps the bread rise. So it has like humidity right. in there. And also, um, you know, there's a timer and everything. Otherwise, you know, you, we can't, otherwise, bakers wouldn't be able to go to sleep. We'd be up all night. So. Uh. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. It's a it's a true deep love of bread. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I would I would definitely say that. I mean, you really have to love this job to um, to make the commitment to work so many hours. Yeah. Now, Lee, do you have a mixer, or are you mixing oh. all your bread by hand? 
なんか no no not by hand、no. no I yeah I have a mixer and I I only have one mixer here right now I was I'm I'm I was planning to bring the other mixer but right now I just have I just have one mixer and it's like fifty liters which is pretty big and I have another mixer that's half this size so yeah it's not completely well I'm sorry it's not completely cleaned out right now but I mean it's clean anyway. But yeah, this is a, it's a spiral mixer, so it's good for for mixing、um, artisan bread or just you know regular bread dough. Yeah. How do you find like with the electricity load? Do you ever like flip all your circuits because you've got too many machines on at once, or is it more balanced because you've got gas ovens and then electric mixers, so not everything's electric? Does that help? Like I probably it does it does help and also some things are running on okay my it's really strange but my oven is gas and it runs on a hundred volts it's not a, not an electric oven um so it doesn't use a lot of electricity like a regular electric oven would which would have to be on two hundred volts and then let's see the dough conditioner that's on two hundred volts and let me think what else oh yeah and the mixer too. But everything's kind of spread out, so yeah, we have more electricity than what we need. I mean, we have plenty.、Um, and then、uh, most of the other equipment is on 100 volts. So, and the,、uh, we did make a couple of changes where we have the fan. The there's this exhaust fan, this fan over the oven here, you know, <laughs> and it goes out, and then the it, a pipe, and then we have a little fan there, and it goes out to the street, so. Customers can smell the bread when they walk by. Oh, nice!、Well, That's a nice feature. <laughs> But anyway, we got a different,、um, we say, fan this time. One that was stronger. You know, they recommended that we get a better one because this way it'll keep the kitchen really、uh, much cooler in the summertime. So, yeah. And then also the insulation. I mean, I'm. You, a- you suffered through a lot of hot summers in the past, right? Like I really did, and you know, I worked. I mean, until two years ago, with no air conditioner for twenty years, and、um, yeah, I know. But you get used to it. <laughs> I don't see how it's、I、amazing. <laughs> and the other thing is, this oven is really what do you say? Really insulated. Where、um, you know, my work table is just right next to the oven, but it doesn't get hot here at all. And I was really worried about that. And I can mix dough right next door, and I'm not I'm not hot at all here, you know.、Oh, great. But also, this house is you know it's a Japanese house, right? So the wind, you know, if we open the back door and the front door, the wind goes through the house. You know what I'm saying? So、nice. So it's really I don't know. And also, we're on, we only have sunlight from the front and the back. Um, but you know, it keeps it. What do you say? I think it's going to work out really well because it's going to keep this place. This place is going to stay cool in the summer, and I expect the summer is going to be really hot again. Yeah, I think as it's it's getting warm a little bit earlier this year, like most years, I think it, it's kind of a bad sign for how hot the summer is going to be, right? Look, I agree. <laughs> I'm a bit worried about the summer now,、um, as usual. Um, so up there is that your, what is it like a little pot that you put your sourdough in? You like to put it in the pot to make that design, right? Like I said, like those are like willow and I don't know willow or wicker baskets, and so we shape the dough, and then we put it in in those baskets, and then we put them in into the into the dough conditioner, the proofer, retarder, overnight. So the dough goes in there usually about by the evening, and then it, it's taken out usually about nine to twelve hours later. Wow! Yeah. yeah. Now I I interviewed a vegan、uh, baker. She does cakes、um, the other day, and she was talking about the reason she wanted to start was because she just could not eat cakes like she wanted to eat in Japan. And I think that's a very similar story to you, isn't it? That's why you wanted to start this bakery, because you just couldn't eat breads like you wanted to eat in Japan. Is that right? My God, that's right. Yeah, I couldn't find the bread I wanted to eat. I had, you know, this really great bread in California, and I always had it on my mind. And 
you know, that's what got me interested in bread. I couldn't find the bread I wanted to eat. Now, now you can find bread. I mean, bread similar to what I'm making, you know, now. But at that time, it didn't really exist. There were a few people making sourdough bread at the time. Yeah. But making um, artisanal, is it called artisanal bread that you, that's your style of bread making? How would yeah, you yeah, describe? Artisan bread, that's my, um, uh, artisan bread, why is it artisan bread? I don't know. I, well, because, you know, it's not, it's made by, well, I'm not mixing it, well, you could mix the dough by hand, but it doesn't have to be made by hand. But, you know, all the dough is like hand shaped. And then let me think, what are some other characteristics? Yeah, you're using sourdough starter. I don't have my sourdough starter with me. So I can't show it. I can't show it to you. It's at home. And Do you keep I it with you at all times? It's so important, right? Do you like sleep with it I, next to your bed? <laughs> I don't know. Everybody's like really crazy about sourdough, especially now during coronavirus. Everybody's trying to make sourdough bread, but it's really hard, right? Okay. No, it, it is hard. Well, it's easy or, or it can be really easy and it can be really hard, you know. Um, no, I, I, keep, I always take, I have my starter, I, I mean, with me most of the time. I, I, do, I take it home and I don't leave it at work. I take all my recipes home. Like my most important things I always take home with me. So I have them with me. Um, and I usually start her once a day. Um, you know, at first I was just doing it whenever I'm feeding it whenever, and then I, qu I quit that. And then now I'm like on a regular schedule, you know, if you want to expect the same results, then you have to, you know, follow the rules. So I'm always using the same flour and mixing usually the same time. The only thing that change, well, the mixing time will change depending on whether it's summer or winter. And then also I'll put it in the fridge in the summertime so it doesn't, you know, what do you say, explode? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I talked to some people in Australia who were making their own sake and uh, they had some explosions <laughs> as they're <laughs> trying to make it because it's fermentation. And of course, bread is the same, right? Bread process is fermentation. So you could have an exploding dough, I guess. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And then just, you do it every day and then you, you know, and that's, I mean, the weather changes, you, you, you know, you learn, you know, the characteristics of your sourdough starter and, and instead of it controlling you, you learn how to control it. So, yeah, like it's, it's fun because, you know, there's no, I mean, everyone has their own way of doing it and there's no like standard, what do you say? way that you know you have to find your own way to, to make bread and your own way to do the sourdough starter and there's just so many ways to do it i mean it's endless so yeah and the other other thing is your is your sourdough is it like years old and you just um, keep using the same sourdough like yeah. starter yeah no, I, it's it's like i had one i mean mine was like i don't know i had it it was like almost like 20 years old and then i don't know got kind of i don't know what happened but it got kind of weird and then so i made another one and i always think that it's not going to be the same as the first one but you know what my bread still it still tastes the same no matter every time i make the starter it's always to me it's the same taste i never notice anything different so that's incredible. I mean, Do you notice a different flavor now you're in a new location? Because I visited, I visited a miso factory and they had loads of, it looked like salt attached to the ceiling. And they said when they make miso in a different building, it tastes different because the, the air is different. Oh. Air has different things. But I, I don't know if that's true for bakeries, is it? Like I probably, I know probably, you know, but I was like in the, the house next door. I mean, the shop next door was a wooden structure and now, and now I'm in the wooden structure again. So I don't, I don't think there's um, really any difference, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think there's any difference unless, you know, if I went, 
I don't know. If, I wonder if it would be different if I worked in like a concrete house or so, a concrete building or something. It might be different, but I don't know. Not really, because I'm using the same flour, so I would think the same bacteria and everything's you know、mm. around you know around me. Yeah. Yeah. Let me think. What else? It's so it's so nice to see your shop. Can you sit somewhere and we can see your face、oh. and talk to you for a little bit? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, let's see. Let me find a chair.、Um, Good to see you. So this transition in total, how long did it take you to transition from the old shop to the new shop? Um. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, we worked. I'm okay. This is crazy. I worked from November. Until the end of December, and then we our last day was December twenty seventh at the old shop, and then the very next day we started moving everything out of the old shop、um, to this. What do you say to this new to our new shop? And then I, we have a upstairs here, like it's really traditional upstairs. Oh my gosh, maybe I should take you there. We have this. Up- oh, I have to see it. Yeah. And then we have this upstairs, and.、Um, Let me think.、Um, so, are you planning to move into the upstairs later? I don't know. I don't know about that, but right now it's just—it's a staff room. I mean, it's a staff room and just an area, and there's a room off there where we we put all of our, our equipment, like all our bakery equipment. We put everything there. Not not the machines, but. And so I have like this whole. Wait a minute! I gotta turn this around again. Okay, and then we have this like kitchen, like a regular kitchen in the back, in the back of the bakery, in the back of the bakery. I'm like,、mm-hmm. so、yeah. Storage area here. I even got a sink, and I even got a. I mean, a, ba- a bathtub here, which we're not using. It's my husband's tool area right now. Anyway, and then we have another toilet here. Like for the staff to use,、mm-hmm. take you upstairs, and then here. Oh, and I want to show you. This is the old, my old, where my old shop was. Yeah, I remember you talking to us from the courtyard right there last time. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going upstairs now. I don't know if my husband's here. She Brady has joined and said hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining, She Brady. Okay, and then yeah, and then we have. Oh, that's nice. I like the wood. Right, I know it's really nice.、Oh, the wood windows. Is it a do- oh? Look at that ceiling. Right. Yeah, gorgeous. So we have this like whole space here. And these. So I、windows. guess it's it's great to have that extra space in future. Even you could. Hire a staff, and they could stay there and and do some of the work for you in the shop, maybe. Or it's just nice to have that versatility, or even as a guest house. Okay, yeah, and just you know, I don't know. I think it's it's going to work out. I mean, it's always better to have more space, you know, for later on than not enough, right? Yeah, that's、you、for、know? sure. And then I and then there's like the Tokonoma there. Ah, Tokonoma here. Yeah, sorry, it's not cleaned up. And then this, like Yuki, what do you call this Yuki model here? You know, it's really nice. That's great. And then a small space for, like, you know, just doing office work here, doing computer work. You know. So, Lee, when people order from you, are you doing all that online sales and stuff as well yourself? Um, usually, yeah, it was me doing it, and right now we're just, you know, we're concentrating on selling at the shop. So I just I put a hold on mail orders for right now, but、um, yeah, usually it's it's I'm doing it myself.、Um, and then I have this other room, other room. It's just a lot of stuff in here. This is where we like stored everything、um, while、yeah. the shop, shop below was being done. So we、mm-hmm. started working on that on the twenty. On、uh, twenty seventh, we start moving stuff, and then the construction we started. Let me think that、uh, all of December, they were working on the shop. So they started working on the shop in December, and then the middle of January is when they pretty much finished. And then June, and I,、uh, my husband and I were the ones that had to figure out, you know, how to do the sales counter and just little things, you know. 
and then also make the um what do you call it the make the um what do you call it the map or whatever what do you call it the il- illustration you know showing where everything would be mm-hmm. um, or, or kitchen layout for the health de- health department yeah mm-hmm. so, and oh Willow Vars said we'll be dropping by this weekend. Congratulations. Oh, and maybe you. maybe you can use the extra room for events in future possibly. That's a good idea. Yeah, that is a good idea. Yes, and then here you can just, you know, you can see outside we have a drugstore around the corner here, which wasn't here when I first set up. Um this was like built how have you noticed changes in your neighborhood? Are more shops opening up? You were talking I think when we talked 8 months ago about how a lot of the buildings around were abandoned like most areas around Japan. Are you seeing more people moving in? Like doing def- shops? No, like I definitely, you know, we have the dentist office which I'm showing you right now and then we have this really cute wine bar. Wine bar across the street which you can't oh, see. Nice. Yeah, but that's and great. Yeah, but I mean, Su- Suezi has joined 581 and says you could do a baking workshop, Lee. That's a good oh. idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. If when if I, you have energy. Look, I want, when I can have someone else like do a little bit more of my work and maybe I can have yeah. some I can help other people, you know, with making bread, I think. You know. Is is that your is that your partner there at the computer? <laughs> I know. Yes, my husband June. That guy. He's a, he's a baking. Hi June. Girl. Yeah. Hello June. <laughs> okay, he's really good at baking bread. Nice. Yeah. It's so great to have a partner who shares your passion, right? That guy. Like it sure is. You know, I never, I never believed that. You know, I never knew that he was born to be a baker, but definitely he was. Yeah. Well, did you think that about yourself that you were born to be a baker as well? No. Not like not not at all. Um no, just you know, c- certain things, you know, happen and you just I don't know, you just, you know, you find something you love to do and then you just can't you can't get it out of your mind and you just become passionate about it and you want to learn more. And yeah. I you know, I don't know what else to say. Just feel- but- you just feel like it it's a fit for you that this yeah. is what you want to be doing in your life. Yeah. Like I, yeah, that's how I feel. You know, this is what I should be doing and and like I, and the other thing is enjoy to enjoy your work. And then also, yeah, I think we discussed this before. Like I had a little bit of a problem with the balance of my work and my private time and I wasn't I own, I was working so so much that I had no time for myself. And then this sh- the shop happened at a good time where I could just, you know, take a break, I had a long break and um maybe I should change to me. I mean, I I could take a long break and then reset everything and decide how I wanted to do my shop and how um I wanted to set up my schedule so I would have more time for myself. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you you feel like you you have a better balance now? of work and free time i know much better balance um and i'm i'm waking up early and i started um my training again so i'm doing my weight training um four days a week first thing in the morning um and then i come to work for you for you first thing in the morning is like 2 (laughs) a.m what is first what is first thing in the morning for a baker Yeah, but I mean, it's usually four in the morning. But I mean, it's so, it's so much, it's so much better. Um, I function better when I have like my time for myself every day, and then I go to work, and then I have more energy to, you know, stamina and energy to work when I, um, you know, have when I'm doing my training. So yeah, and and by training for people who don't know, you're a runner, right? Running's your um, passion. Well, running, yeah. but actually now uh, weight tra- uh, bodybuilding, weight training is like my is my passion right now. But I used to run a lot. <laughs> yeah. So 
Can you tell us about the breads that you're making? You said you decreased the variety. I would love to hear about the kinds of breads that you're you're making every day. Um, the breads we're making, let's see. Um, yeah, I have the list right here. Um, okay, yeah, and our, our I mean, I, I, can't, I can tell you, our top sellers, um, Bobka, chocolate Bobka, which is like a, a roll, I mean, a, like a, a bread that's like a jelly roll that's sliced and, and braided. Um, it has like hazelnut and chocolate cream inside. Um, that's like our one of our top sellers. That and the we also have the same babka and we put sweet potato cream in it. And that's like you know the cream is um, handmade. Um, Did you say that's, that's really like a good. family family recipe that you're using for um, us? It's very unique. Well, it's not so, something you see yeah, in um, Japan, right? Yeah, no, it's babka. unique for Japan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there are a few bakeries making it. Um, yeah, but it's like a kind of a Jewish kind of New York thing. So that I love. Um, and then our our third top selling bread is a Campagna, which is, you know, I'm making, I'm using Hokkaido um, whole wheat flour. It's, it's, I think it's like 30% whole, 40% or 30% whole wheat flour in it. And, and the flour is from Hokkaido? Um, yeah, flowers from Hokkaido. That's really good. Wow, that's great. I mean, almost, almost, almost all my flowers Japanese. Um, but now I use some organic um, spelt and organic rye that comes from Canada. Um, and then let's see what else we're making. Like a fruit nut bread, which is like rye and whole wheat, and it's like loaded with um, raisins, cranberries, um, and um, let me think, and walnuts. That's really good. And then focaccia, because, you know, people, they like, you know, take out items that they can eat right away. So that, and then also, let's see, olive bread, which is really good. Oh, sounds um, great. It has like, where it has where like do you get your food. olives from? Because there are olives in Japan, right? Like Setouchi area is famous for olives. Um, yeah, but you know, my olives, they're from, um, uh, France and Greece. Um, yeah, no, we, we put a lot of olives in the bread and, um, yeah, it would be really expensive. Um, I would love to see olives. more olives, you know, like where I am in Hiroshima, the Setouchi area. Um, quite often I'll go around the islands. They've got lots of citrus, local citrus fruits. Um, they also have lots of olive things, but they don't sell just the olives, like oh. just marinated or pickled olives. I really hope that they start doing that because I think there's a lot of demand from bakeries and and even me. I want to buy and eat them. <laughs> you know, or they would be really nice to use just on the top, you know, on the top for something. Or like, or for example, if you put like three of them in a bread or some some kind of small bread that, that, that might work but you know i had a, would be i had a shock i had a shock when i picked an olive off a tree which looked really good and tried to eat it oh, and of course you can't you can't eat it from the tree like you have to i guess soak it in oil or something that was a real shock i didn't realize that um june thanks for joining june says i like all of them but my favorite is called godzilla Tell us about your Godzilla bread. Oh yeah, like that's not. Yeah, I haven't gotten to that on the list. That's like number nine. Oh yeah, and the, I forgot. After the olive, we have the cardamom, uh, cardamom roll, which is really good because we like fresh ground, uh, grind the cardamom seeds for that. So that's really good. I love that bread. Um, yeah, the Godzilla bread is yeah that's named because. Um, because how we shape it and then we um, cut it with it. We snip it with the scissors on the top. So it makes like a, what do you call it? What would you call that? Like, you know, those, what do you, what do you call those things that are come out of Godzilla's back? You know what I'm talking about? Like scales? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, I guess scales. Yeah. So that's how that, where I got that, that name. And then it has like walnuts or, or, um, for um, almonds inside, whole almonds inside. And then also there's oatmeal, 
the spreads is interesting because um, they make an oatmeal porridge and we put that inside the bread. So it's mixed with dough. What? You put oatmeal, oatmeal porridge inside the bread? Yeah, inside the bread. So it makes it really moist and um, yeah, it's really good. It makes it wow. wholesome. Love this that bread. sounds awesome. Chubby, chubby oh, yeah. cat has said, would love to visit your bakery one day. I don't know, are cats allowed in your bakery? <laughs> well, the cat, well, I have like three cats that come visit me every day here. And then one's a, like a cow and then the black kitty, he just came by. But yeah. And then I'm, I'm going some... to get a dog. A dog yeah, cat. you have some neighbor, neighbor cats. Yeah, they might not like it if you get a dog. They might stay away. <laughs> oh, but I love cats. I'm a cat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the other bread that we have, that's, oh, yeah, and we have a couple other things. Um, banana bread, which is, like, the recipe I've been making since I was, like, probably eight years old. That's one of the oh. um, main It's really good. Um I love that. And then we also have a croque monsieur that we make. We have, usually it's just veg, vegetables. So, I mean, sometimes I do it with ham, but I'm like, you know, I always think people, they need to eat more vegetables. Yes. Um, you did a great selection of vegan breads for me. And when you sent it to me, um, you didn't use hardly any plastic packaging. Is that one of the hurdles, like being able to send things without plastic packaging? Still quite a hurdle, I imagine. Look, I, yeah, it's a real hurdle. And then people, you know, suggested to make the, um, we call it that wrap, you know, make the wrap and then do that. But, and I went, went online, I looked at the price of the, what do you say, the beeswax or whatever, the wrap, and it was really expensive and... That is expensive, isn't it? Like, kind of I, I, yeah, I've had some deliveries like from cake shops where they they use old boxes, so they'll they'll do like one one thin layer maybe of plastic wrap or something, but then they reuse like the cardboard boxes in different ways. Um, but it just it takes a lot of staff time, which I imagine is one of the concerns for you, right? How much time is it going to take? Not got a time. And then also, you know, I always want to get rid of the plastic bags, but you know, bread, it dries out. So, yeah. you know, it dries out. And then, so if we keep it in the paper you, bag is... Cause you, yeah. you have quite a lot of regular customers who do subscriptions. Do you envision in the future, you might have like usable plastic containers that people could have and send back or something if they're local local customers maybe yeah. i'm always thinking about what could possibly work because it's such a big hurdle the plastic problem you know maybe I, you know i don't know if people would be willing to send the, send the what do you say send the plastic containers back because they would they, i don't know if they would like to have to pay that the postage for that mm -hmm. do you have many local customers who come by a lot and get takeout or like I, most customers are visitors. You know, most most of my customers are the local people that live here in, in the town of Oiso. Um, they mostly local people, or the or the people that matter. Um, and then on weekends, you know, we have a lot of um, out of town people that come by. Um, and then yeah, you I don't you know, do have yeah, back to the, the back. yeah yeah. You do have quite a lot of breads which are vegan or vegetarian friendly, though, right? Yeah, I'm not almost all. I mean, if you can, I mean, if you're okay with butter and eggs and um, butter, eggs and milk, then yeah. Um, but then you know, <laughs> people that don't, yeah, you know, I do have some breads that don't have any any eggs or milk in them that are sweet too. So yeah, I think. You know, there's something for everyone here. I'm using lots of meat. But I do have like this ham and butter baguette sandwich that we're doing that's really good. And I could do just cheese, you know. 
that's you know but right now we're just doing the ham and the ham and the butter but you know i'm always like, you, uh, you have to find what the local customers want too right like what brings people in how how have you survived okay during yeah, coronavirus that's, that's really tough? You know, you have to yeah Um, well, what we did was we, we started, um, we reduced the, the shop um, hours in the days we were open. And then we started taking orders by phone. And then that really, um, yeah, that helped us a lot to just, you know, what do you say, focus on, you know, on, you know, selling bread to the, you know, local customers, to local people. Um, yeah, so we just like changed everything around, and now we're we're not taking res uh, reserved orders. Now we're just we decided no, we you have to if you want something, you gotta come to shop and get it. That we weren't gonna take the um, take we aren't taking like phone call reserved orders because right now we're so busy that it's hard for us to to you know answer the phone, but we will answer the phone. Um, and then also, we're not doing the mail orders right now until, you know, I need to give the, the staff time to get used to of the shop right now and how it's, what do you say, how it's running. And also, yeah. not all the staff knows that all the all of our products yet. So I don't want to, um, what do you say, you know, increase the menu too quickly. And yeah. then, so we'll probably we'll just you know I have requests for certain items that I don't have that on the menu right now. So we're probably going to um, start rotating, you know, different items every week. So yeah, but anyway, I'm just I don't know. I just I'm really happy with how everything turned out, and everything is just I mean way better than I even imagined. I mean I just can't believe it. I just I never. <laughs> You must be so happy and so much more settled and feel like this is the place. Okay. This is yeah, the place. Yeah. I'm going to be working for a while, you know, like feeling happy going to work. That's that's so important. Okay, it really, really is. And I, and I just, you know, I feel, I feel really, I feel, I, I don't know if I should say, I feel sorry for people that, you know, they're really confused right now in, in this corona situation and, I hope that, you know, more people can find, you know, some kind of peace or a way to, you know, what's the word? A better way to maybe work or to work at home and have more time for themselves to, you know, enjoy, what do you say? Enjoy doing the things they like, want to do or what they love to do. Yeah. Yeah. I have one last question before we sign off. Um, what do you do? Do you have a management policy like for waste or extra things that you don't sell? What's your strategy to try to get as much out the door? Do you discount things throughout the day or do you give it to staff? Do you have some kind of policy about wasted stuff? Uh, well, like unused vegetables, you know, I usually eat them. Um, and then leftover bread, you know, we give it out to the staff. And then other bread we use, um, we use to make sandwiches, like those croque monsieurs, we'll use it for that. And then, um, let me think. Oh, uh, your audio cut out. I can't hear you for some reason. Are you there? Oh no, I can't hear you, Lee. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Uh, I can hear you now. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I got cut off. But yeah, we try our best to, you know, only make as much as we need to sell and not, not more than what we can sell. And then I, I give, you know, bread away to people and I give it to the staff. And then, you know, if we have um, really good bread that we can't sell, then I'll just freeze it and use it for another recipe. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, I think for you as someone who loves what you're doing and loves the bread so much, it's not just about the waste, but it must like hurt your heart if it's not 
enjoyed and and loved because you put so much love into it, right? Okay. No, yeah. And I think people, you know what? And I saw one tell me, you know, I, you know, I was really worried about if our shop was going to make it. And they told me, they told me that no, you're going to be fine because people, when they eat your bread, they know it's different and it's not like the others. And they feel something when they eat your bread. They feel like some kind of warmth and like you know, a lot of care and hard work was、um, put into what we make, and they can feel it. You know, and and you know, and I go out and I eat other people. I mean, I go out and I eat other breads, you know, by other bakeries and stuff. And really, you can you can feel these things when you're,、um, I don't know, when you're eating something. I don't know, I can. Then maybe I'm, I'm a little bit weird, but、anyway. no, no, I can, <laughs> I can too. If you eat something and someone has put love into it, you taste the difference. That is for sure. And I've eaten your breads, Lee, and they're amazing. And I can taste the love. Thank you, Joy. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on Instagram today. It was kind of a last-minute change because I'm having internet trouble at my house. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. It was so fun to see your new place, Lee. I can't wait to visit myself okay. someday. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining us today, and a big thank you to Hiko Simon via SoundCloud for the royalty-free background music that I use in all of my Seeking Sustainability Live talk shows for the background music. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Have a great day. Take care.